So we know that sciatica is one of the most common and most debilitating conditions that patients experience. But what actually is it and how is it diagnosed? If you're ready, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So let's start off this video with what is sciatica? So sciatica is a direct pathology of the sciatic nerve. This nerve runs from the lower back through the buttock region and then down the back or posterior aspect of the leg. It can give rise to all kinds of different symptoms, including a shooting sharp electric pain, sensation changes like pins and needles and numbness, or motor weakness changes where individuals might have weakness in the foot, particularly in the calf muscle for plantar flexion. Now, it probably won't surprise you to hear that the majority of sciatic symptoms are due to disc-related pathology. In fact, 85% of the time, disc pathology is the main cause. So therefore, we might also expect our patient to have low back pain in conjunction with their leg symptoms. So when it comes to diagnosis, the Stein's probability criteria is brilliant at telling us the key clinical features that we expect patients with sciatica to present with. So each of these clinical features comes with a certain number of points. And when we add those points up, it helps us predict the probability for sciatica. So first of all, if your patient reports any pins and needles or numbness in the lower limb, they score one point. If your patient reports pain below the knee, they score two points. If your patient reports that their leg pain is worse than their back pain, they score two points. If your patient has positive neurodynamic tests, and here we're thinking about tests such as the straight leg raise or the slump test, they score three points. And if they have any changes on myotomal, reflex or sensory testing through deficit in the lower limb, they also score two points. We then add those points up, and as you can see on the right-hand side, there is an increased probability for your patient having sciatica if they have five or more points. This gives us an 83% chance of probability. However, as you can see, this percentage jumps up rapidly when we get to six, seven, eight, and even nine points. And actually, this tool is really useful as well for helping us with differential diagnosis. So for example, a key feature that you can see here, when patients report that their leg pain is worse than their back pain. This really, really helps us when it comes to thinking about whether our patient has back pain with some hamstring tightness. In this situation, they may not necessarily report that their leg pain is the key clinical feature. However, with sciatica, we know that patients report a sharp, shooting, burning sensation, which is definitely more intense than their back pain. So in particular, look out for that one. And as you can see, the combination of all of these features together increases the probability that your patient has sciatica. So what are some of the common risk factors? What kind of population do we see sciatica present in? Well, the peak age of onset tends to be between 40 and 60. You can see that this is around the mid working age. So we think about those individuals who are lifting, who are in manual jobs, they also might have increased risk factors. And therefore, naturally, when we see patients who have had recent mechanical overload, for example, I've just been moving house, I've been doing lots of bending and lifting, that also increases our suspicion. When we see patients who are long-term smokers, we also find this is an increased risk factor for sciatica, as well as obesity. All things to consider if your patient presents. Now, we can't talk about sciatica diagnosis without talking about quadriquina syndrome. And that's because one of our key concerns as a physiotherapist is that if our patient has sciatica, perhaps through a disc compression as we talked about, our concern might be that the deterioration of that disc compression could lead to something called quadriquina syndrome. This is compression of the distal nerves at the very end of the spinal cord, which is the quadriquina. And those nerves control really key functions around our lower limbs, but in particular, our genitalia. And it's well known that if quadriquina syndrome occurs and is not rectified, it could lead to permanent damage of those nerves. So as a result, it's always important for us to ask as a part of our consultation to our patient about the quadriquina signs. Things like, have you been having any changes in bowel or bladder? Have you been having any numbness around your private areas? Have you noticed any difference in your legs, any weakness or bilateral numbness or pins and needles? Or even asking about sexual dysfunction to see whether or not those nerves 
controlling our genitalia are working properly. All really important. And if your patient says no to any of those questions, it's still really important that we educate them on what quadriquina is so they can look out for those symptoms if they happen to present. So guys, that's a quick run through for sciatica. If you want more on this, we've got a brilliant video coming out soon on treatment of sciatica. And we've got loads of resources on our membership website, member.clinicalphysio.com, including lumbar spine differential diagnosis, red flags within the lumbar spine, all amazing resources for physiotherapists. Remember, you can also follow us on Instagram at Clinical Physio for loads more for physiotherapists too. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for joining us. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.